Hello, everybody. I think we are streaming now. I'm just also going to bring up my Facebook so that I can see any comments. So welcome. And uh, my name is Shirley Joy Joffe. I'm the creator of the Joyful Abundance Blueprint. And today I have a very special live. And I'm just going to wait a few minutes because I've got a bit of surprise for you all. So we should have one of my good friends and one of the ladies I work with actually coming joining us live. So just give her a few moments and just make sure that I don't need to do anything over here. So let's see if we can get this working. Hi, Patty. Hi there. So let me just check if she's managing to get on. Let's see. So this is the first time I've used Zoom to actually stream live and we get we agree and hopefully be able to do some screen sharing and do some really fun cool stuff. You know what, what I might do is, uh, mm, 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 mm. no, that's working. Sorry, just bear with me a moment. Just make sure it's in, she's in the right meeting. <laughs> okay. So just as um, hopefully we'll get Jamie, Jamie on, what I'm going to be doing with you today is a snippet of part of what I do with the um, with my my optimal soul flow comprehensive evaluations, and part of that is um, human design. Very small part, and I'm just going to dip in with with Jamie when she gets on and do actually a live re reading for her on her on the two aspects of her human design chart, just to give you an idea as to what the kind of things I look for. Uh, I do this work very intuitively, um, along with uh, many years of, hi, Jamie. <laughs> Sorry, it was at the thing that the other one was, um, it said waiting, waiting. Right, yeah, I think I have to actually do the invite when I'm actually in the live stream. That, that seems to work. This is fantastic working um yeah i was i was just telling them what we're gonna do and mm -hmm. that um as much as there is a lot of um concrete background to this i do this work very intuitively and i work with many different um aspects of the cosmic design of a person uh, of, of a soul um, and a small part of that is human design and then the cosmic human design so thank you so much for agreeing to let me read a bit of your chart. And I think we've got one or two people on live. I know that it's very spontaneous, so people will catch this on the replay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to share your charts because I've got them on screen. I'm just going to put them in the right place so that I can still look at the camera while we're doing this so that people can see us. And there we go. So let's share screen. So oh. people can see us. I'm just going to share this so that people oh. can, people in my so community so can oh, experience. Yeah, yeah. This this is so fun. We we've just had a little play with this earlier, and. Um, I just I just absolutely love doing this. This is like so exciting for me. So um, I hope that I that, that you'll notice that excitement as well. <laughs> and this is kind of like the giddy giddy schoolgirl type, um, like ah, birthday. But this, is why, this is why I said to you, isn't it? Like we need to go live and do this because your your energy around it is just like I, I love it. And you know what? I actually get <laughs> can be quite sad. I get very excited when I see people's charts <laughs> because 
all straight away I start putting together all of the amazing um all of the amazing potential that's mm. actually available to to the to the person through mm. their chart and mm. sometimes people don't really don't even recognize how much amazing energy they've got available to them until yeah. it's pointed out so it's so 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 cool mm -hmm. so um as you can see i've actually got two charts up and what i actually do is i don't just use uh traditional human design i use um cosmic human design as well because of the evolution of of a person through their life and as many of you will know and jamie we talked about this is that you don't stay the same even though you're born into maybe a blueprint you don't remain the same person from birth all the way through. Hi, Flynnos. Um, you actually do change. Part of that is through releasing things that are the not self. In human design, we call it the not self, things that aren't you. But part of that is also the movement into um, the next evolutionary stage of your soul. And typically that would happen in another incarnation. But in the stage that we are in the world at the moment, it's um, people are evolving quicker. So sometimes you might find you're actually caught either in between the two or you've actually stepped into a next phase. So let's get let's get to, down to brass tacks. I'm going to talk a little bit about a very I mean, tiny little part of what this is, uh, just to give you a taste, obviously, in a full a full reading, a full evaluation. Uh, it takes two days for this to actually come together. And there's there's a lot more information, but it's also very structured. So it's mm. something that people can go back on for for years to come. Mm. So it's a real it's a real something that it's like a gift to yourself to know mm. what where you, where you are, what your energy is. Mm. So. And and just and and I think you know one thing I want to mention is you know when you went went through this with me um, a few minutes ago, mm. like there's a lot of readings out there where you just get this one piece that people can see in front of them now, and this cosmic piece is is just like a whole nother level. And again, this is just when you're doing an evaluation with people this is just one modality that you're covering this is just one type of analysis one type of reading that you're incorporating into your evaluation of you know what is going to be optimal flow for people um what's going to help them really get in that optimal flow um i'm, I'm excited for people to see both of these two things in tandem because this is exciting right yeah, it really is. So let me just first of all, those who've never seen a human de design chart before, let's just really quickly just go through what elements you're looking at, because it can look like gobbledygook to a lot of people initially. So for those of you who've never seen one, there is the um, subconscious, the soul energy, and then there is the conscious um, side. This is the stuff that happens for you and to you without you even realizing because it's the soul imprint of um, three months before you were born actually so it's the soul imprint of when it comes into into the into the fetal body and then the birth part is on the on the right hand side which is the conscious this is the things that we we kind of feel and know that we're bringing to to the world and it's it's at the point of birth, which is why it's so, so important to have an accurate birth time. If you do the, the, the human design charts and it's not an accurate birth time, sometimes you'll get a completely different chart. And, and you'll be there left wondering, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. So the other thing which you've got here are the energy centers. These correspond very, very closely to the um, to the chakras. And they're just they're just energy centers. And when they're colored in, that means that the energy is switched on 24 seven. So you have access to that energy 24 seven when they are open or clear, undefined white. That means that you don't have that energy switched on all the time. And it also means that you become like a big uh, coffee filter that can get very clogged up with everyone in the whole world and the universe's stuff relating to the theme of the energy center. So each center has a theme. This is head center, 
This is the, so in, in typical terms, crown, third eye, throat, um, that's your sacral, heart, um, a sacral, sorry, that one is um, the solar plexus, and then down into the root. Now it's defined differently slightly in human design, but that really is irrelevant. So the things that we look at is also a hierarchy of how this is made up for you. So most people have maybe heard of generator, manifesting generator, projector, reflector, and um, manifester. These are the five, five main types. And that's really what a lot of people focus on. And all it is really is your interaction with the world. So it's, it's how your aura speaks to the world, your energetic body. And although it's a, a top level important thing to look at, it actually doesn't define you very well. What we're looking at more is the profile here, which is the numbers and the centers. Those will give you a much more accurate um, definition of who you are. So Jamie, let's talk about your, let's talk about your profile actually, because that's quite an exciting one. And I'm going to show you how that evolves because that's where it's really fun. The centers and the profile. So Jamie here is a one three. The one is the investigator. That's the person who goes out, wants a lot of detail. They are experts usually and collect a lot of information and then they can distill it and give it back to the world in a very coherent, very clear and very funneled way. And this is how Jamie would experience herself. Is that fairly accurate, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, that's always, that is one of the things that's always been me and always will be me, yeah, definitely. And then the number three is actually how other experience, other people will experience you or they will um, see you as. And that part is very experimental, mm -hmm. flexible, likes to try stuff out. So usually they are the early adopters when technology comes out, they'll have like the latest thing, um, even before it's out in the shops. They'll be, they'll be the beta testers of the world in tech, that sort of thing. But also what that means is that they're often prone to thinking that they're making mistakes. And until they realize that their profile is designed that way, um, they'll often be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, that sort of thing. So, you know, if you're a business person, you may sometimes have like bad investments. It happens, shit happens. <laughs> but that is the number three. Hmm. Um, so there's a lot more, obviously, to that, but that's really just a very, very um, top level. Mm. Now, usually certain numbers will then translate on the next iteration, the incarnation, to the next level of numbers. And I think when we, when we were looking at this initially, before I even brought up your chart, I said to you, I reckon there's a three, five coming up. And I said to you, you're going to go from manifesting generator, probably to generator, because yeah. I had so experience in, in seeing how these, these types evolve. Yeah. And me asking, is it possible to be a manifester in human design generator in cosmic? Yes, absolutely. Totally. Um, and that can confuse people. So this is where I clarify that very, very accurately and clearly when I do the, um, the evaluations because you might be completely different so let's look at jamie's cosmic human design and you can see uh, uh where are we where are we down here i'm just going to highlight it for you so she has actually moved to a three five so the three that was the the space where other people experienced her now she has learned to know that for herself it's an awakening it's a knowing and then an acceptance of, of the person she truly is. And the five is, so where the one three is very much in the interpersonal space, the upper numbers are moving out into how, the, how it's shared with the world. So with all of that experience from the one, which she, she keeps, you know, you don't, you don't lose the stuff that you had in the previous one, you get to keep it and build on it. She can now experiment further and actually bring it to the masses and it for depending on how she um chooses to interact with the world 
it doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to have to be speaking to loads and loads of people. We're talking things like being on stage, uh, writing books, things which can impact many, many people. Whereas some of the other profile nines are meant to impact fewer people. And at a five, generally it's at a, a not such a deep level, not such a deep dive. So something like this, this um, evaluation is a very deep dive, which Jamie with her number one line probably is, is I'd imagine you're quite enjoying that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love, you know, new information and new insights and kind of integrating mm. everything, as you said, around around the one. Um, and it's funny what you said as well around the um, the mistakes thing because um, I used to be very, very, very self-critical. I'm still very analytical, but I don't turn that inwards into self-judgment in the way that I used to. I use it to critique things professionally and actually help people move forward and you know use it constructively. Um, but I used to be um, really, really scared of making mistakes and there would be lots of things that I didn't try because I was so scared of making a mistake. And now I'm totally fine with making a mistake. Obviously I try and avoid making mistakes, <laughs> um, but I understand that when you're expanding rapidly and you're trying new things, and uh, especially when you're doing things that you haven't done before, sometimes mistakes happen and that's okay, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and knowing that that's what, you're there to tread the path. That's why it's called the martyr. Yeah. You're there to do the stuff so that someone else doesn't have to do it often. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm actually yeah. really obsessed with um, like taking any experiences that I've had, whether it's positive experiences, whether it's things that haven't gone to plan, whether it's, as you said earlier, just information, taking those things and then translating them into very concise, clear lessons for others so that yes. they can learn from, from those things. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's where so we were, I was talking earlier is how that evolves from your main human design here yeah you're doing the experimenting to moving into mm. your cosmic human design now when this I, I will always look at both charts in the evaluation but it doesn't I don't always have that sense that intuitive sense that someone is moving into their cosmic chart it may be that they're actually within still within that main chart they're still working through it still experimenting that life through it mm -hmm. and things that don't resonate are things that need to be deconditioned mm -hmm. because we're all conditioned through through our birth through family through the culture that we're in the country that there's so many things that are coming into us that um that can mask our true self our true identities mm. so, so do you um, notice Shirley like with with your clients when for example um people have already done a lot of deconditioning yeah do you notice that they are more aligned with the cosmic chart than the original chart 100 yeah. percent. if you've been doing inner work lots of healing um if you've been on a personal development path for a while mm then you're more likely to be either in transition or stepping in or, or actually in the human design. I've had, I've had a couple of people who are literally the, the main human design does not resonate in any way, yeah. shape or form. Yeah. And we've worked all evaluation on the cosmic human design. And the interesting thing is because I use my intuitive sense, mm. I, I will be guided to where that is. Mm. Mm. and that's important isn't it because people can feel really pigeonholed you know if they just see this one chart and it's like well this is who you are and this is who you're going to be they feel quite pigeonholed can't they I mean some of it um obviously can be phenomenally accurate but mm. if you're looking at just this first one that might be who you were 10 years ago or who you were five years ago and not necessarily what you're embodying today so then its application isn't going to be as relevant for people is it Totally. In terms of like what to watch out for, what to, you know, make sure they do, what to avoid in there. Yeah, and what, I, what I'd also um, offer is 
as, as much as having a, a bit of structure around knowing things, it's how to actually work with those energies because it, it, it is very, very comprehensive. The human design map, the way it's created is very comprehensive. Mm. Um, and you can have the same role, same business or, or something like that, do the same thing, but do it in your way, mm. aligned with your your design, whether it be the main or the cosmic, that works for you. So, for example, if you're a marketeer, like you are, mm. you, you do a lot of that sort of work, mm. uh, you can do it as a projector, you can do it as a manifester, you can do it as a, as a, as a manifesting generator, generator, you can do it from any of the profile positions, but you do it in a different way. Mm. And when you know how that way works for you so that the the uh, the road signs almost of what you need to be looking out for it just makes your journey so much easier mm. and you literally step into that flow mm. Mm. and flow is so important isn't it you know people um people can think that flow is is a thing for the few or that flow is a thing that can only come occasionally and actually it's totally possible isn't it to really feel like you're in flow almost every waking minute of every day and to feel like you're really operating from your strengths and you're managing your stretch points easily and you know yeah. you're, and you're not comparing yourself right one of the things that's important about this is is giving people permission uh, to stop comparing themselves to others or stop comparing themselves to an Im image or vision of perfection or an image exactly. or vision of, of um, something that's not achievable, right? Because we, we can't be good at everything. We're not designed to be good no, at no. everything. We're, designed, we're each designed for a unique purpose, aren't we? 100%. And um, I mean, there's something in, in this also, which is to do with circuitry, which I only so there's so many areas in in the chart. And mm -hmm. I'm always guided to notice the things that are appropriate for the person I'm reading for. Mm -hmm. um, but if you remember sort of tribal times, each person had a role, and there was no one role greater than another. So you, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't go, oh, I have, you know, I'm I'm the one who I'm the blacksmith. And I, I really wish I could be the, the, the medicine person because that medicine person is better than the blacksmith. No, mm. everyone has a role to play. Mm. And with, with your design, it's kind of like the, the jigsaw piece. And if you are not your true jigsaw piece, there is a piece missing in the fabric and the tapestry of, of the world, of the planet. Mm. And all of the souls that incarnate at any one time, they all form that tapestry. Mm. and then some step out and some come in and it's constantly evolving mm. so, and this isn't totally, this isn't just about you know you doing a reading and telling someone right well this is the exact uh you know business you should have or this is the exact career you should have it's it's mm. indicating those themes these are the activities that are going to be most in flow for you these are the ways of of um, operating the ways of relating that are going to be most aligned yeah. for you so that then that individual can then go away and implement those within the structure yeah. of 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 their exactly. life right? mm. yes, it, there's, there's nothing in this that is going to 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 um that goes to making somebody wrong for the decisions they've made to this point yeah it yeah gives, is the opportunity for choices mm. So a lot of people come to me and, you know, they love what they do, but it's just draining them. So we just look at how they can do what they do that they love mm. in a way that doesn't in yeah. their flow. Because um, sometimes and it's, it's the case, isn't it? Sometimes it's the case that um, what someone's doing is aligned for them, but the way that they're doing it and the specific activities that they're fulfilling on a daily basis are not for them, right? Exactly. Exactly. So and this also point them to where they need to adjust. And mm -hmm. this is where we talked about the um, the north and south nodes because you've got your north and south nodes for the subconscious and also the conscious. Mm -hmm. And if you 
are heading both the both north nodes in the same direction, then you're going to be in that flow of alignment. But if you're going one way with your conscious and your soul is pointing a different way, then there's going to be some some friction, some friction in your life. You know, you'll be really fulfilled, um, like on a human level, but your soul is going to be like, no, this is not what I'm here for. And eventually that's going to pull you out. Mm. And this is where you get people who are doing amazingly to get to a, reach a certain point in their career. And there's that deep emptiness mm. because they weren't following their soul, soul alignment, their, their North node. Um, I also use gene keys for life purpose to see what you're, where you're truly. And it's not just what you're doing. There is a um, energy you bring to the world. So are you working with that energy that you should be bringing to the world? And you can do it in various ways. Mm. Mm. yeah and um you know it's quite common isn't it for people to be very smart and great at what they do um but be you know fulfilling on that in a way that can secretly leave them feeling a little bit empty right and that's that's why this kind of stuff is is really important to get clarity on so that we can have you know, high achievers, people who are doing really well, people who are impacting the world, who also don't feel empty inside, right? Yeah, because you're, you're just going to move, you're, you're going to do more when you are filled, when you are living your, your soul's flow, when you're living that part of you, living in, I, I personally, I believe everybody has the option and the choice to be joyfully abundant. Mm. And part of that is living as your true self. It, it would be the same wearing a mask every day. You know, we're, we're, we're taking the mask off. Hello, oh. this is, I love so shall we? Shall we give people a, an example from my chart? Um, so oh. tell, tell, tell those people watching about what the situation is with my throat. <laughs> ah, yes, the situation with your throat. So... So Jamie's moving, she's in transition, she's almost there. Moving from the defined throat center where um, you, you, you do have the words of spells type thing going on. She's, she's actually got a very strong chart, Jamie. I, I did get rather excited when I saw it. Um, so she's got two things where she will be able to literally speak into, into reality. And you know, there's this kind of like, um the, the the gold of the world where you speak and there and there it is right so jamie has that in her chart with her with her throat defined there it also means that she it can be very articulate very concise collect all her her words and um she, she doesn't need to take care of that and to make sure that she's constantly clearing herself because she has that energy switched on all the time. So it's gonna be resonating in the world, vibrating in the world constantly. She also has a right, right pointing manifestation arrows, which means that the thought comes in, if she speaks it out, it's gonna come true. So having that, that clearing is really, really important for her. But let's see what happens when, we, when she moves into the cosmic. Suddenly, she now has an undefined throat. And when, when I showed her this, she was like, hang on, what's going on here? But it's not just about the undefined throat, it's about what's happening above. So go back to the main one. She's got a defined Ajna. So she still has that open space here where if she clears that coffee filter, she's gonna be receiving information directly from source energy from the divine area. And she'll be able to channel cosmic truths, um, higher, high level, um, create a level energy of information and then she'll go into making sense of that and channeling it through her voice when you move to the cosmic though now she is a clear channel now a lot of people see this as a weakness mm. but this means that she can literally clearly and like with no filter when she does her regular self-development, her clearing, her energetic um, cl clearing, she'll be getting the information straight in 
there will be no trying to make it fit into the human world and it will come out it's almost like divine speaking mm. and it's it's where someone is literally that there is there is no barriers mm. to the channel mm. so so for her now as she steps into that she'll she might find that actually she's saying things she has no idea where they're coming from yeah they're divine this happens to me all the time by the way lots of you who you know those of you who follow me you will know I, I literally whether it's in client sessions whether it's you know uh walking around in the park doing a facebook live whether it's producing a piece of content things will literally just drop in and then i channel them and there's very little kind of filtering very little conscious thinking i mean i'm yeah. pretty thoughtful deliberate person but when i'm channeling it's just like poof. yeah straight through yeah uh, the other thing that really which we didn't talk about but just popped in just to give people an idea of how far this could go yeah this is where people are able to speak in a language that isn't their mother tongue mm -hmm. they channel light language because they have that clarity um for me i have an open throat and often phrases come out of my mouth when I'm doing sessions and that kind of thing that I've never heard of before and I'm like where is that from and that's because there is there is the open throat where you can channel communication very very easily so yeah very very fun and exciting so obviously this is just a little preview into one tiny aspect of what you do when you're doing evaluations for people aren't you around you know where have they come from where do they have the potential to get to um yeah. tell us a little bit about the the full gamut what the happens full gamut. when when we when we're covering the full gamut of what's possible there yeah so once once you actually go through this this process it's initially with me channeling it and, and reading it. I spend two days in that container doing that. And I go through the human design, the cosmic human design. I, I channel intuitively other areas. Sometimes astrology comes in, sometimes um, numerology comes in. Um, I do touch on uh, gene keys. And I go into, what I do as well is, I go into the areas that are specific for you that you need to know that are important, not everything, because I mean, anyone who's actually gone into human design in a little bit more depth will know that you can really get stuck in, in, um, you know, all of the, the little nitty gritty, there are channels, there are, there are uh, gates, there are nodes, there are planets, there's, there's all sorts of things that you can go, that you can go into. But I go through those bits that are relevant, but in a lot of depth. So you, you get a really, really comprehensive reading on all of those aspects. I even go into language and behavior profiling because that's very practical for people to know how they're motivated. So this is, this is a very, as I said, very, very comprehensive reading. It's very different to just loading up a chart and trying to read it or even having a live reading with someone, because what I do is I send a recording out. The recording is, is pretty long and very detailed. And what I do is I give, the, give um, my clients the opportunity then to jump on a Zoom with me uh, later on after they've actually digested this information, let it filter through those centers and all those areas so that they can ask questions that are relevant. And then I do clearing. And that's that's the magic right there. So the whole thing together means that once you get to the end, you are able to know your true self. You experience yourself in a way that you never knew was possible. And you can start showing up in the world really um, deeply knowing who you are and honoring that. Um, there's a lot more to that. But um, <laughs> Charlie, can you tell people so when you're doing clearing? what does that look like what what is it what is it that you're clearing and how does it work yeah so i'm clearing all of the uh the conditioning and the programming that we've had in our life and sometimes 
well, not sometimes, often ancestrally, historically, and cos cosmically. I use various um, clearing techniques, whatever is re uh, required. I'm qualified in about five or six different techniques. I've been doing this for, for over 20 years. So whatever's required, it usually comes through as, as the client asks questions. So mm -hmm. as they ask questions and I respond, I'll, right, we need to clear that. Let's mm -hmm. clear that because I can see that they're coming from a, a, a particular little point where there's some conditioning, holding an opinion in place, holding a belief in place. Mm -hmm. But if we clear that, opens up the door for much, much more. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, it's, it's the beliefs and the conditioning that are pushing them to operate outside of their optimum profile, isn't it? It's the beliefs and the conditioning that may indeed be keeping them in the first chart rather than in yeah. the cosmic chart or yeah. um, operating in a way that doesn't even match either of those, right? Exactly. exactly. Mm. I've had people come to me and say, no, that, that's not me at all. Yeah. And as we go through it, and then, because... and then so then you, you probably ask the question, right, well, how are you feeling then? And they're like, I feel like shit. <laughs> and then you're not exactly. surprised, right? Exactly. Because when you're living in your chart, you feel fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I experience that you feel fantastic when, when you're living in, in, yeah. in your definitely. In your um, Shirley, I have to jump off, but I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you so much for, um, for doing this with me it was it was really oh, fun God. to um to share this with oh. everyone <laughs> love thank you jamie thank you bye bye so guys that was a little taster of um of what is involved in a soul an optimal soul flow reading and evaluation and what I, what, I, what I have coming up is I'm offering this to people. So if it's something that inter is interesting to you, then please drop me a DM. The investment for this until the 31st of May is 1497. And I can do that um, for you over, over uh, two, two payments. Um, that's, that that's, um, investment will change. So if it's something that you wish to book on, what you can do is just drop me a DM and, and we'll, we'll sort out the particulars. I have limited spaces for these because as you've seen, they are pretty, pretty intense and go into a lot of depth. They are kind of like the cornerstone for people of living as they, as they truly be and opening up to expansiveness in themselves. So if it's something that you are interested in that uh, you know you're watching me doing the readings and, and how we go through that that's exactly what you'll experience and you get the the one-to-one -one with me afterwards then just drop me a message and i'll be super excited to work with you one little caveat you do need to know your your actual time of birth so if that's if that's something that you you don't know or you cannot get hold of still contact me because i have a solution for that too Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was that was fun for you. Hi, hi Renuka. So yeah, I hope that was fun for you. And those of you who actually did watch that, I'm, I'm not getting much on the Facebook there. Hi Linos, I'm glad. I'm glad that sounds sounds good to you. It's um it's super fun as you can see. I I just love working through this stuff and channeling and and having those those messages come through for people with a very practical application so let me know if that sounds interesting to you and i will see you very soon thanks a lot bye